at the moment, you have no choice. When you buy spot gold in size, you get what you get. And what you get is unsecured uh, creditor status with the bullion bank through the LBMA system. Now, because you have no choice, that is the way people invest in spot gold. But because this new exchange is opening, what it infers is that you're going to suddenly have a challenge to the monopoly. In other words, you're actually going to have an alternative spot contract to invest in. Mm -hmm. And given the rather better quality of it, you know, you have title. Uh, you're not just lending money to a bullion bank. You're actually buying gold. It's fairly obvious that very quickly, the people who are invested through the LBMA system are going to, or certainly at the margin, a number of them are going to want to transfer their investments from the one market to the other. Yeah. Well, the, the, the two exchanges will operate separately and independently. So isn't the natural reaction at the Pan-Asian exchange price will go to a premium to the LBMA spot price for the simple reason that it's closer to physical? Absolutely. And Absolutely. as a consequence of that, more people will be attracted to the Pan-Asian exchange. And it will just feed Because itself. those who want physical are not going to play in the paper exchange. They're going to go into the physical And it's exchange. only because, of course, they didn't have a choice. So, so yeah. I, I believe a lot of people are simply unaware of the, of the, the truly dubious quality of the spot contract they have. Yeah. And by, by dint of seeing the new one, that will help them to understand what they own at the moment and will lead to them wanting to, to, to move across from one to the other. Now, is the Pan-Asian exchange privately owned or is it owned by the, the it's owned by It's owned by the Chinese government, effectively, through state-owned enterprises. They own 90% of the exchange. So they're standing behind it in terms of the integrity? 100%. Sorry, I have failed to, 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 to touch on a very important point here, James. The, the guy who, who helped China get into the WTO is pushing it. Um, you've got the, you know, the trade ministry, the vice president of the DRC, all the key people in Beijing are not just behind it, but they are actively trying to push it. In fact, Dr. Liu spoke at the um, opening ceremony, which uh, Andrew McGuire and I were part of via video link. And, and he spoke passionately about the renminbi entering the world stage, because of course what this exchange does is not only allow you to own proper gold, but allows you to open potentially open-ended quantities of RMB um, without gold, if you should wish to. So in other words, they're, they're going to help international investors yeah. to, to buy the renminbi contract, net it off against the COMEX contract, leaving you just with RMB. So, so you and I probably would want the gold, but, but, but international investors will be able to use this gold exchange to access RMB if they, if they uh, offset their position in dollars through the um, existing and this would be different in the sense that you actually have the RMB with in, in China, yes. in Kunming, as opposed to the, the pseudo RMB facilities that are not That's taking it. place in Hong Kong. And bear in mind, of course, that those are wholly liquid as well, James. They're not really, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can buy RMB at the moment, but there, yeah. are, there are all sorts of uh, blocks to it. And the people who block access to RMB is SAFE, which is the um, State Administration for Foreign Exchange in right. China. And the key guy behind SAFE is behind Pan-Asia Gold Exchange, and that's the way they want to roll the renminbi out into the global market. Well, it's very interesting because if you look at Chinese policy over the past decade, you know, every month or every quarter, they're uh, changing the restrictions that had previously been in place and opening it up and you know, moving China further and further into the international financial uh, arena. And so this is a very logical step for them to be taking. And uh, the way they set this thing up looks like it could be quite profound in terms of what will the impact be on the metal market in, in the years ahead, given the fact that you know, China is the largest gold miner in the world, uh, one of the largest uh, buyers of gold in the world. Uh, it should have a significant impact on the physical price of gold. Absolutely. And to doff the cap to Mr. McGuire again, he, he, you know, talking to him about it, the explanation is that you know, in that environment, are you going to stay short? I don't think so. You know, you're, 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 the, the shorts are, are comfortable with the situation in as much as they know that monopoly is still in place. Yeah, the, the, the controlling both the tail as well as the so body the dog, of the but dog. But it's really, really, it's about the dog. But everyone focuses on the tail. Yeah. But it's not actually about that. It's yeah. about the dog. Yeah. And what, what, and I, I put up a slide at the conference and get, get a few laughs, which was I put up a, a rather crude sketch of a, of a basset hound with its tongue out. <laughs> and, and I made the point that that's the, the nature of the dog at the moment is, let's say, rather compliant. And then I said, future price discovery of gold and a picture of a Rottweiler with its mouth open. Ah. Because I believe that's the situation, which yeah. is, well, and remember, the Rottweilers don't have a tail either, James. Uh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> so the idea being is that, you know, suddenly that dog will be keener on biting 
the person trying to wiggle its tail rather than being happy to have its tail wiggled.